Today we're making things Christmassy and cozy. Let's add a fireplace to your footage. What's up guys, my name is Francois, welcome to this brand new channel and thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful snowy day. This video is part of a playlist on how to learn After Effects where I teach you all the tips and tricks of the industry. I'm releasing new tutorials just like this one every week and actually next week I'm going to show you guys how you can create a full-on Christmas fireplace scene from scratch. So make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss it. Also coincidentally, today's my birthday! <laughs> So feel free to come and say hi in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer every single one of you guys. So today we're taking a look at how to add a fireplace to our footage using basic compositing tools in After Effects. Now this is more of a fun little effects than a full on realistic project because you know, it's Christmas and let's have some fun. So I've got this back plate of me jamming to some sick Christmas music over here but it doesn't really feel like Christmas just yet. So let's fix it and add some fire. So here's what you're gonna need for today's tutorial. A back plate with an easily replaceable wall or panel or background we're not going to do any rotoscoping today, but if you'd like to learn how to easily rotoscope, you can check out my first ever tutorial on this. I'll leave the link in the description below, or you can click on the info card right here. You're also going to need some brick wall texture, some stock footage of a fireplace, and some stock footage of a plain fire. And finally, the last thing you're going to need today is to grab your snack, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. The first thing you need to do is to mask out the part of the footage that you want to add the fireplace in. Press G to bring up the pen tool and start drawing around the wall. Set it to none for now, and let's set the feather to about five. Now import the brick texture and pre-composite. Let's call it brick texture and leave all attributes. At the moment, the texture looks too big, obviously, so let's go back into the brick texture pre-composition and add a CC title effect to the original JPEG. This will seamlessly replicate the texture. Somewhere around here, yeah, it looks good. We can close this one, and let's go back to the brick texture and pre-composite it again. Let's call it brick talent and leave all attributes again. Add a camera and set the view angle to about 90 degrees. This was only shot on a GoPro by the way, so you'll have to match the focal length to your original camera settings. Now turn that brick tiled layer into a 3D layer. Now we're going to try and match the angles and look of that brick texture with the actual wall. So let's drop down the opacity of that texture a little bit, so it's easier to align the two together. Switch between the rotation tool and the transform tool with W and V on your keyboard. Once you're happy with it, set the mask layer of the back plate to subtract and place the brick texture layer below it. Now let's add a hole for our fire. Go back to the pre-comp called Brick Tile and draw a cutout inside of the layer Brick Texture. To help keep the proportions of the fireplace footage, just add it in. So now we end up with this and to match the size and position, we can log this composition, reopen the Brick Tile composition and drag it to the side so we have both side by side. Now with the mask path selected, press Ctrl Command T and you can hold down shift to keep the proportions and just place it wherever you want. Somewhere around here looks good. With the brick texture composition selected, we're gonna add an inner glow to add some fake edges. So select the layer, go to layer, layer style, inner glow. Let's hide the mask for a little bit for now. Zoom in, set the color to black, size to 15 and choke to 4%. Now let's finally add some fire. Import your fireplace footage and pre-composite. Call it log fire and leave all attributes. Press OK. Now inside of that log fire, go back to the original footage and cut out the parts with just the fire. Feel free to leave some black borders around. It's just going to give us some wiggle room when placing it in 3D space later. Make this composition 3D and match the size, position and rotation of the whole cutouts. Make sure the fire layer is underneath the wall layer. If you want a quick shortcut to match all of this perfectly, I've got a little trick for you. Delete the log fire pre-comp, duplicate that wall layer and make sure it's selected. Now in the project panel, find the log fire pre-comp again, click on it, hold the Alt key and drop it on the wall duplicate. This will replace the wall layer with the fire one, keep all attributes as they were. Now it's just a matter of tweaking. Lazy tips for lazy people. Now duplicate the fire comp and make it black and white by applying a tint effect. Mute it, scroll it black and white. Drag it below. Now add a displacement map to the normal fire layer. Set the source to the black and white one. The vertical displacement to zero and the horizontal displacement to about minus 30. Now this technique has its limits, but it's a nice way to fake some kind of 3D, especially if the camera was moving. Let's add some more fire elements to create some depth. Pre-compose it, call it fire two and leave all attributes. Now in order to place that layer in 3D space, let's just do what we did with the log fire one. So delete the fire 2 precomp, duplicate the log fire, and replace it with the fire 2 precomp from the project panel by holding down the old key. Magic! Now it's a lot easier to adjust the scale and the position accordingly. 
and set the blending mode to add. Put the fire 2 layer under the lock fire layers and set the blending mode on the color one to add. Now we get some nice depth. Now let's get rid of some of those hard edges over here. Let's go back to the fire clip, double click on the rectangle tool to select the whole frame and feather the mask a lot. You can adjust the selection so it only makes the bottom softer and play around with the expansion mask. That looks a lot better already. Okay, so now we've got all the elements in and at the right place, but it doesn't look too great yet, so let's just blend them together. Let's start by adding a light and making it the same color of our lamp here. For all the 3D layers but the wall layer, go to the material options and switch off the accept lights option. Make a few duplicates of that point lights, set the intensity down to around 40-50% and move them in 3D space until you light up the whole wall. Let's go back to the original brick image and make it brighter by adding a curves effect and pushing the mid-tones up a bit. Now let's go back inside of the brick tiled composition and add a CC glass effect to the brick texture here. Leave the source as it is, reduce the displacement to zero and the softness to about 15-20. Now in the light section, keep the intensity at 100% and the direction at 45 degrees. And finally, in the shading tab, increase the specular to 100. That's going to give us some nice reflections around the edges, which is a good way to simulate a bit of volume. Now, let's make the contact between the fake wall and the real wall a little less harsh. With the backplate layer selected, go over to Layer Style and add an inner shadow. Set the blend mode to normal and the color to some mid-tone-ish color near the edges of the two walls here. Set the opacity to 25%, the angle to about 180 degrees, size to 5, noise to 35% and choke to 0. Now let's add a drop shadow, set the color to the same as the inner shadow, angle to 0 degree, size to 7, noise to 25% and spread to 0. Okay, so I just want to take a moment to say that if this is your first time on my channel, thanks so much for joining me on my actual birthday. So I'm very new on YouTube here, so if you could give this video a like and subscribe to my channel, it would mean the world to me. Now back to the cool part. Now let's add some ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion. I don't think I've ever said this out loud before. <laughs> Create a new solid and make it black. Mute it and draw some rough lines around the corner of the room. Unmute the solid and feather the mask a bunch, playing around with the size and the opacity until you get something like this. Okay, we're getting there, but there's just one thing we haven't done yet. Fire is incredibly bright and usually projects a lot of light, and we're not seeing much yet. So, on both the Lock Fire and the Fire 2 layer, let's add a color vibrance effect from Video Copilot. It's entirely free and will be included in the download pack in the description below. So let's start with the first one, set the color to a nice reddish color, increase the brightnesses to about 1.7 for both layers, and vibrance to about 1.35. Let's copy that over to the Fire 2 layer. I'll just create a black solid, call it BG for background, and leave the color to black. Place it below everything. Create another new layer, call it Highlights 1, make it some kind of orangey color from the fire. Mute it and draw a rough mask around the edges of the fire hole. Feather the mask a lot, and once again, play around with the size and opacity until you get some nice glow around the fireplace. It's good so far, but we're not done yet. Once you're happy with the look, bring up the opacity by pressing T on your keyboard, hold the Alt key on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch. This will bring up the expressions. Now I know, I know expressions can be scary, but I promise you, this one is very simple. Just write the following and press enter on your numpad. See, it wasn't that bad. You barely felt a thing. Now what this does is randomly change the opacity values 10 times per second by values of up to 10%. Just make sure that the original opacity, so the one before the expression, is higher than that second number. Otherwise, the expression will randomly set the opacity to 0%, and the reason why you don't want that is because fire never stops emitting light. Now let's duplicate that layer, call it Highlights 2, delete the mask, and this time draw a rough mask around me and set it to Subtract. We're avoiding me since I should be obstructing the light a little bit. Okay, so now let's set the opacity to about 9% and change the expression by clicking on it and make that second value 3. Once again, keeping the second value of the expression smaller than the original opacity level. Finally, let's duplicate the first highlight layer one more time, put it on top, delete the mask and draw a rough mask very close to the hole, set it to add, draw another mask, this time matching the exact size of the hole cut out and set it to subtract. Finally, select all the highlights layers and set the blending modes to add. Here we go, that's a lot better now. Let's play it back. Obviously, in an ideal world, we'll have to track all of my emotions, maybe add some more highlights on all the reflective surfaces, but I think this does a pretty good job at demonstrating the effect. And finally, let's add some color correction, maybe alert, and boom! 
we is done. So then this is nowhere near perfect. Ideally, you wouldn't be shooting on the GoPro to start with. But I thought, you know, let's get into the Christmas spirit, get festive and excited together. So there you go, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something useful. If you did, and you did my accent, make sure you like this video, get subscribed and hit the notification bell. If you're wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to watch this video right here. I'm really proud of it and it would mean a lot to me. Finally, I'll be posting two more videos before Christmas. So until then, I will see you later.